Hello class, welcome to the next installment of our online class video series. Uh, this is like my seventh or eighth take on this video, so I'm starting to lose it. <laughs> we'll see how this all goes and hopefully this will be the last one. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking with you about how we're going to be creating our homepage, our index.html. I know we've been waiting to do this for a very long time and I'm very excited to actually uh, get to this uh, stage. Uh, for our home pages, we are going to be coding our index.html uh, so that we have full screen images. Images that will stretch to the edge of any screen uh, that we our uh, website will be viewed on. You'll see that it's going to have just your name and a little tagline. Mine is Film Polaroid Digital that I created for my sample site. Uh, yours will be related to whatever it is that you are showcasing on your on your site. Okay, uh, we are going to be styling this so that there are three different images that you're going to be using. One image will be used for your phone. Um, this is the iPhone 5. Here's the iPhone X. Um, we're going to be styling one for your iPad or a tablet. Uh, again, a different image, one for each image size. This is the iPad, uh, iPad mini, same size, iPad Pro 10 inch, okay, uh, the Kindle Fire, all right, so any of the tablets uh, that are available. And then also for uh, various laptops, we'll have a widescreen uh, landscape image, okay. And there will be a navigation bar, of course, on that page and all of your pages. Uh, as I will be talking about in another in another video. Okay, um, I have made some updates to the course uh, website assignment page so that uh, based on what I've been working on creating the templates to ensure that all the information is there for you. Uh, first you'll see that there is an additional media query uh, on the image home CSS uh, file. Uh, this is in place of the 1024 px uh, this is necessary to ensure that the images are displaying properly on your tablet screens. Okay, um, The templates are there as well. I'll be going over there those in a few minutes to help us get started. I do want to point us to the images uh, very quickly. Um, you, as I said, you're going to be required to use three different images for each of the three screen sizes uh, three screens you will be styling for, for the tablet, for the phone, and for your computer. Uh, there are hundreds of different devices out there, as you know, all with different screen sizes. And I have worked hard to try to get you si to get your sizes uh, that I believe, and through my tests, will show up properly on each of the devices. Um, now I could not have tested hundreds and hundreds of devices, obviously, but uh, looking at the different aspect ratios of all the different devices, I think that these will work on nearly all of the devices, and they should. Um, we are going to be styling for the portrait views on our tablet and our, and our phone, and the landscape view on computers and for the iPad 12, uh, which has a very high pixel uh, rating there. So for the phone uh, portrait view, the width of the image must be 120, one, uh, one, 1,125 pixels wide by 2,436 high, uh, tablet 800 wide by 1,280 high, and the computer 2048 wide, 1536 high. Uh, each of these should have a resolution of 72. Okay? I know that is a low resolution, but that will reduce the image sizes um, to ensure that they load quickly on the, each of the devices that you have. Um, if you want to have higher resolutions for your portfolio items, for example, I recommend uh, having a dedicated page on your site that it just has really high resolution images. I understand the need to have high resolution images, uh, but we also have to ensure that they load quickly uh, for our users. So this is a, a trade-off uh, that we have. Okay, And if you create a page of high resolution images so people can see the specifics, they will understand and and know that it might take a little while for your images uh, to load. Okay, so please start looking for images that will you can crop down to each of these screen sizes. So for the 
the, the, tap, the phone portrait view, uh, for example, uh, if I show you this here again, responsive design mode. You know, this image here was originally a square image, uh, but I cropped it in Photoshop to that exact size. Okay, uh, this image uh, for the tablet was a vertical image, but it was not this uh, thin. It had also it actually had the the film sprockets in it and everything like that. Uh, I cropped that down so it would fit uh, this exact size, 800 by 1280. Okay. Now it is important to note uh, that we are not styling for our landscape views on all of the devices. Okay, So the landscape view on this Kindle Fire will actually show uh, my computer landscape view, which, which, is, which is great. Uh, the iPad Pro 10 inch, however, if I go to landscape view, it's just going to show this water and sky. Um, and that's okay with me. I'm fine with that. And I recommend that you find images that you'll be okay with how they're displaying uh, at the landscape view. It's very difficult to style both the portrait and the landscape. It's a lot of extra media queries and very intricate mathematical things going on there. Um, so I just recommend you find an image that you can live with how it's going to look in the landscape view. Uh, so spend some time looking for the images that you want to use. Um, these images should tell a story about who you are and what to expect on the page without having any words accompanying them other than your name and the tagline. Okay? They should tell a story about who you are, what your interests are, and your aesthetic and the kinds of things to expect on the page and are on your website. Um, and I believe that each of these images uh, do that for me. Um, the, the first two more so than I think the this one, but even this one does tell a little story about who I am and the kind of photos that I take and the things that I am interested in um, sharing sharing with the world. Okay, and that's and that's really what we're that's what we're looking for. All right, so let's move on to the templates uh, for this project. Okay. There are three templates here, an index.html template, an image home.css template, and the nav CSS template. I'm going to be covering the nav CSS template in another uh, video, uh, so we'll get to that at that, at that time. Okay. In order to get these templates, I recommend you open the link in a new tab. It will show you the code that is here. All you have to do is select it all, copy, open up brackets, go to File, New, paste it in, and because this is my index page, okay, I'm going to go File, Save As, Site, and I'm going to call it index.html. Now you already have your index.html, so you're going to be saving over it, and that's okay. You just click Save, uh, replace it. Yes. Okay. And I recommend that the first thing that you do is change your name right here in the title. So it does not say Bill Wolf anymore. Okay. Um, just get that out of the way. All right. So that is our index.html. I'm going to go back to the website. I'm going to open up imagehome.css. I'm going to select all. Copy it. And I'm going to go back to brackets, file new, paste it in, and we're going to save this as file, save as, and I'm going to go into my styles folder. Now, because I've already created this in the past, there's a file there of imagehome.css. You'll, you'll name it imagehome.css, and voila, we have our CSS. Okay, let me walk you through the template a little bit, the index template, um, just a, a few seconds. Okay. As I recommended, change this title to your own name. Now this all will look very familiar to you um, based on the templates we've been using uh, on your other sites, other pages, your contact, your about, and your portfolio uh, page. 
you'll see that there are two CSS uh, lines of code already in your template, uh, imagehome.css and nav.css. And we're going to be creating a nav.css and talking about that in another uh, video. Um, there's also the line for Google Fonts, which you should recognize. These are the ones that I've used on my site. You should replace these uh, on your site, okay, with the fonts that you are using. Now we're going to scroll down and you're going to see all this stuff relating to your navigation. Ignore that for now. Okay, that all needs to be there. You will update it and adjust it. Okay. And then there is a section here where we're actually coding the content. And as you recall from the site, the only actual written content on the page is Bill Wolf Film Polaroid Digital, right? Uh, we're using background images for these images. Okay, so those are not actually in the HTML code. They're going to be in the CSS, All right? Um, so you'll see uh, my name and then this span class subhead film. This little character here is what the code is for a bullet point, Polaroid digital, okay? Um, this ARIA label um, is important for accessibility. You're going to you put here any alt text for all three of the images that you are using. Okay? Background images do not have the ability to have alt text using it as if it would be in an image, IMG, SRC, blah, 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 in the HTML. ARIA label is used in its place. Okay? Now the validators will give this a warning. There's something up with the validators, I'm not sure why. But this is where you should put your alt text for each of the three images. And you can say phone image, colon, and the alt text, tablet image, colon, and then computer image, colon, giving you alt text uh, right in there. Okay. This is the only area right now that you'll have to change uh, when we're thinking about our images and how you're styling your home pages other than the navigation bar. Just update your name and update your tagline, whatever you want that to be. It should be very short and sweet. Okay. Okay. Now moving on to the CSS, this is a little bit more involved. Uh, one of the things that this CSS document is designed to do is help you or challenge you uh, to try to figure out what is happening in the code on your own. Okay? One of the keys of being a successful designer and coder is being able to go and find code uh, that is happening on other people's websites and look at it and try to piece together what is happening in each of, for each of those styles. Okay? So I'm not going to go through and explain every little thing that is happening in this template. Uh, the key for you is to, if you are, have questions about it, either look that up, um, change things slightly, and see what the effect is, if it breaks or not, then you'll know what that is controlling. Okay, um, and to experiment somewhat. All right, but I don't want you to change too much because if you change too much, it won't work. Each of the individual screen sizes, each of the individual devices, the fact that it's stretching to fill the board, the full screen, uh, it will break. Okay, uh, so this code, just like some of the other codes that we've been using to style video, for responsive video, for example, we just need to use it. Uh, but if you play around with it and break it, you begin to see how, what is, how things are working. Okay. Uh, so you'll see a variety of code. Um, we've got our body, HTMLs, our div, uh, div ID content, which you'll notice is on the index page. This is making sure that everything is 100%. Uh, we've got our class for our index photo, and so on and so forth. Um, and this is all in the main section. I've set up this template exactly as I set up the other one, uh, your main.css. Uh, it has a reset style sheet, and uh, it's got the main sections to reduce redundancy. Okay. Now, all this here in the content area is basically telling, making sure that there's no spaces at the borders of the content area, and so on and so forth. Uh, background repeat means not to repeat the image that's going to be in your background. Uh, there is a way to repeat it, which means you'd have multiple images showing up 
over and over and over again. Uh, the background position is in the top left, which means that it's going to take your image, the top left of your image, and position it in the top left-hand corner of the browser window and display the image from there. So you might notice that things at the bottom are cut off depending on the screen size, okay? So if you're choosing an image, make sure that the main subject area is high enough so that it's not going to be cut off um, at the bottom, okay? If you have an image where the subject area is inverse of this, for example, the window might be on the bottom, there's a bunch of green stuff at the beginning, you can change this to bottom left, and then it will position your, the bottom left of your image in the bottom left corner of the browser window and display upward, okay? Uh, that's essentially uh, what's there. Uh, background attachment scroll, then you just leave that the way that that is, okay? Your H1, this is where you're going to be styling your fonts and your typeface. You can see I've got Montserrat, color, transforming the text uppercase, make a background transparent, and position absolute. Now, we have not talked about absolute positioning just yet. Okay? Um, at least I don't recall that we have. Um, so far, we've actually been positioning things relatively based on where we're show things are showing up on the screen. But you can choose exactly where you want an image to appear. Okay? I'm sorry, an image, text, any element. You can choose where you want that to appear. And we call that absolute position. Okay? So I can choose that I want this image, I'm sorry, this text, <laughs> I told you it was late, but it's been a day, um, to appear exactly right here. This distance from the edge, this distance from the top, or the bottom. And I can do that for my phone screen, for example. Let's show that, because we're going to see that first in our style sheet. Um, iPhone 5S. I can say that I want my name and this um, tagline to appear exactly in this space. Okay? And as we go down to our phone screen right here, um, we see I've got my font size, my letter spacing, and I've styled it bottom 50 pixels and left 2%. And what this means is I want the H1 up from the bottom 50 pixels and I want it left 2% from the left 2% in from the left hand side of the screen. So this up to here from this bottom area up to here is 50 pixels and this is 2% in. And that's why it is appearing where it is. I could, if I wanted to, have it appear higher up um, by changing a couple of things. I could change this to, for example, top 50 pixels. And I'm going to save this and upload it and just show you what the difference is right there. Styles to styles. Okay. Come back here, I'll refresh. And you can see my name is now up here at the top. Okay. And you might say, why? Why would you want it to appear at the bottom of the screen, not the top of the screen? And the reason is this little navigation. Okay. When I pop this navigation down, it would cover up my name. Okay. And so on my phone screen, I'm going to be positioning this. Uh, down towards the bottom, and let me uh, that. And you can style from the right if you want your your text to be from the right, two percent in or fifty percent in or how far in you want. Um, that's up to you. Okay, let me just re-upload this so it's the way that I want it to be. Now, a question always arises, how do you know what pixels to put it there? Okay, how do you know what to do? And the answer is, it's guess. <laughs> it's just trial and error. I went from 50, 25, 150, and I finalized uh, that I want it right there. Okay? Um, and that's pretty much how you do it. Okay? And you'll see that in the, uh, the tablet portrait view at 768, I have 
very similar uh, things here. Oh, I forgot to delete this position absolute. It's sort of redundant. We have it back down here. Nope, I forgot to delete it right there. Okay, you can just delete that because it's already in the main section. Got my top 580, left 10%. Okay, so we can see how that looks slightly different on our tablet, an iPad. 10% in is that, top 580. Okay, that's why it's positioned uh, right down uh, where it is right there. Is that the best place for it? Sure, it works at the, you know, at our landscape view. Okay, sometimes if you push it too far down on the, it won't appear uh, on your landscape view. And that's that's something that you'll need to uh, adjust as you're as you're playing around with things. Okay, and again, I'm styling this thing this also in our computer screen size 1280. Here I've got left 2%, top 600, okay? And I'm, st and I'm styling also for my letter spacing and my font size and, and so on and so forth, okay? So that's, that's the text. Now, now here's the images. And you can see that the background image is, the, uh, is what we're going to be using for, for including our images, okay? It's background-image, URL, parentheses, single quotation mark, okay, dot, dot, slash, images, whale spray, BW1125 by 2436.jpg. All right. This dot, 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 as if you probably don't recall, but we've talked about uh, relative linking in the past. Uh, what this does is it tells the browser to go back one file one folder to find the images folder. So if you look at where the style sheet is, okay, it is located in this styles folder. Okay? In order to find the image, it has to go, your, your path has to go back to your web design folder, mine's called sample site, and then find your images folder. And then in there, you find your image, okay? And that's what that dot dot does. It says go back one folder, find your images folder, and then find your image that you want to use. Okay? Now, I strongly recommend, I cannot emphasize this strongly enough, that in the file name for your image, you put the aspect ratio, or the, the pixel widths and heights, excuse me, that you are using okay so here i have a width of 1125 by 2436 and i know this is the right image and i know that this is for my phone uh, portrait view okay and you'll see that i have done this for each of my images 800 by 2 1280 and 204 by um, 1536 okay i cannot emphasize this enough um, doing that because it helps you find the right image. Uh, you might have several images that are similar names, um, and you find the right one, and it will appear in that first. Okay, uh, it will appear in the right screen, the right aspect ratio, the right pixel sizes, and so on and so forth. Okay. Please, I really strongly recommend uh, that you do that. Okay. Uh, once you know what images you want to use. Uh, you need to make sure that you actually upload those images to your images folder, right? So you drag over the image that you want to use. I've already done that, which is why it works. Um, and you see how, see how things are looking online. And that's pretty much it for our home page. Um, you'll adjust your font sizes and your font faces and so on and so forth. You'll adjust, you replace these image names with the ones that you want to use for your web page. But mostly it is just making those small changes to the CSS template and making small, a very small change to your uh, index.html based on the template that I have provided for you. Okay. If you have any questions about that, if anything isn't clear or things are not working, please let me know. And uh, good luck and have fun with this. This is really the, the identity for your site is what you're coding right now. 
and uh, it, it, it should be, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how, they, how they look. So, have a great day, and um, like I said, let me know if you have any questions. All right, see ya.